political and geopolitical risk holding back the markets? Stay tuned, we'll discuss this and much more. Hello, this is Michael Loftus for Wealth and Wisdom TV. First up, don't forget, below you can click for additional information, links to articles, etc. from today's video. And if you're looking for a different opinion, that of Wall Street and Big TV, please do consider subscribing. So first up, numbers, month end, something different now as we go forward, we'll discuss. But here we've got tech and small caps holding the markets. Why? Well, I'll tell you about smalls. They are benefiting from the tax cut. The other thing is, with the strong dollar, it does not generally affect small cap companies as much as large cap companies where up to 50% of their profits are derived from overseas. Let's go to the big charts. First up, the Dow have not shown this in a couple weeks, but you can see it here. We've got a momentum crossover on the bottom, right? MACD, we're crossing over, negative, not good short term. You can see a series of lower highs. Most importantly, we've broken through that 50-day moving average and seem to be stuck, stuck there, so we will continue to watch that. Next, as we talked about, NASDAQ looks real good has set up nicely, a little bit of a base recently, and then breaking out. Not quite to all-time highs, but seems to be heading in that direction. Why? We've got a nice turn up on momentum there at the bottom, and at the top, relative strength. Not only do we have a little bit to go to 70, that generally means overbought, but as you'll see in the chart, it can also sustain there, which is a good sign. I look for tech to continue to drive forward. How about the S&P? Yes, we continue to be stuck here. This is from a couple weeks ago, just updated this. We had a nice bullish flag, which is bullish, obviously, okay, setting itself up, but then failed. We're still stuck in this box. How about today, if I look at this, get rid of that flag, kind of see it in the background, you have a rising bearish wedge, not a good sign. Let's see if we either break out or break down from this area. But again, stuck going nowhere at this point. So on a short-term basis, despite that, our short-term signals are positive. Next, our weekly view, our midterm view, still negative. Why? Look at the bottom of the chart. Two of our momentum signals continue to be crossover. But I do have the one there, as you'll see, slowly starting to uptick. If that moves above, that should be good for the markets. You're also still below and continue to fail, trying to get above that 15, 16 support level. I'll have Michelle highlight that line. So let's see again, right now, midterm, negative. Next up, long-term monthly view, and of course, as you see, still a bullish trend line here, being above your moving average there. So at this point, again, still in a positive signal. You see it crossing over, holding. Let's see what happens. Obviously, we'll continue to watch that. If that bearish wedge continues, we will look into that. Next up, market breadth. Right here, we're going to start with companies above or below the 200-day moving average, which should show us a good view on breadth. Looks good. Above 60% is bullish, as you can see across the board here. S&P, NASDAQ, mid, smalls, all above on the longer-term view. So again, a 200-day moving average, it's going to be a little bit smoother, as you do see here. Now, in the 50-day moving average, you're going to see some volatility, as we saw recently. But here again, S&P just below 60%, NASDAQ is above, mids above, and smalls all above. So, short-term, again, also confirms our short-term view of being positive. So here, I don't really talk about selling May, but I ran this the other day, a 
seasonality chart. So what it shows, going back to 1999, what has happened on each month of the year. As you see in the middle of the chart there, that's basically our May, June, July, really during that selling May time. And yeah, historically, it has been weaker. Pause this, look at the numbers, they speak for themselves. It shows the percentages where it's been a, above or below the S&P in those months. So, you know, definitely have some uh, reason to be cautious here in the summertime. I also always joke about the traders all leave on Friday, short week, not as much volume, which therefore can create some volatility. Next up, before I move forward, don't forget we have our financial plan for our wealth and wisdom viewers information below. See if we can help you out. Next, what happened to global synchronization? Everyone was talking about this last year. Now, the big story last week, Italy, okay? We know what's going on there. Very similar to Brexit a couple years ago. One day down, one day up, the market seemed to shrug off, but it is real. Okay, and if you look here across the board, you've got the S&P at 2.28, but you only have France at this point up. How about China? Look at China where they are, Japan, and emerging markets. So taking a closer view here, here's the China chart. Wow, death cross, down, pointing down. I mean, there is nothing good here going on in China. I mean, they always say that their growth is... 6% or 7%, but can you ever believe them? Yeah, maybe not so much. The overall emerging market, same thing. I mean, it's broken below. It's 200 day, don't have a death cross yet, but that is not a pretty picture. Let's go to the sectors. So again, this gives us a good idea of what's happening overall in the markets. These five sectors represent 76% of the S&P. And as we've said, tech, tech is really the only one outside of there. Financials went negative in the last week, a lot going on there. Health is really struggling. Consumer uh, discretion is one of the few sectors that is up and industrials are down. So bringing it all together, U.S. equities as a group, 10 of 11 in an uptrend. So as a group, we're in an uptrend. International, only 8 of 53 in an uptrend. And that's down from 22 two weeks ago on our last video. And that is why our midterm signals and confirmation where we see a negative view right now. New tweet of the week. So here we have Michael Leibowitz. I really like this chart here. I'll have Michelle br uh, break it up there, break it up. Make it bigger, all right? What he says is trying to show returns are highly dependent on one's entry and exit. That is so true. I'm in the process of finishing up uh, research in a video. Does buy and hold still work? Hopefully we'll have that out shortly, but it is true. And right now I've had a bunch of new folks that have recently retired. It's so important to be careful in that first year of retirement. I'll put an article down here on sequence of return and what exactly that means. Next up, one of my favorites, odd stats, for obvious reasons. Here he says, in the last, um, in the last uh, trading hours here of the month, but when in May, when the VIX, volatility index, closes between 13 and 17, since 1990, what has happened? Very interesting, pause this, zoom in, okay, and you'll see that the VIX is higher down the road. So we're gonna continue to watch that. Thanks so much, Odd Stats. Last but not least, Charles Kimball from Kimball Charting. Not only does he have great charts, but he's got great graphics. He has a pretty good sense of humor, but here, will these two troublemakers bring down the market? He's got home construction, which is breaking down, and financials will continue to watch that. Next, Treasury. Big story last week. We saw a big move last week down and up, but most importantly, Treasury spreads 10-year minus two years is down to 0.42 from 0.43 just a couple weeks ago. You can see we came down and then went back up again. But right now, here's a look at the UK. 
Germany and Japan, we are at this point the best treasury yield out there. That's why if something happens like we saw last week, we saw a little bit of a flight to quality because where better to go than uh, U.S. Treasuries where you're getting almost 3% on that 10-year. On my radar. So, trying to be quick here, let's wrap it up. Semiconductors, classic, double bottom, boom, boom, set itself up nicely and then is broken out. We added that to several counts. Last week, same view, double bottom, boom, boom, break in, well, not break out, but it's consolidating after that double bottom, very similar to the semis, and we're waiting for it, so we tiptoed in there, been in and out of biotech several times the last couple years, because it does get volatile, you got to look at your price targets and watch that closely. Wrapping things up, what keeps me up at night? <gasps> well, there's a lot of things that keep me up at night, but as it pertains to the market, Total credit outstanding as a percentage of disposable income. Look at that. Shooting through the roof. That is not a good sign. Next, why store branded credit cards, right? Very similar. Delinquencies hit a seven-year high because people aren't paying their bills and they're stretched. And in 2018 could be a record year for store closings. Went shopping on Saturday for some slacks. It was raining. Place was empty. Now, I do live in a small town, but that's another story for another day. Last but not least, the debt. Look, it continues to go. Let's go live. Look at that spin. That is scary. Okay, why aren't we talking about this? $21 trillion in debt. What are we going to do about this? There is a time that this must be addressed. Fear and greed, 52 this week, 44 a week ago. Definitely a neutral stance, which confirms our neutral stance right now because short-term, positive, mid-term, negative, and then again, our long-term signals are positive. As always, thanks so much for watching. This is Michael Loftus for Wealth and Wisdom TV.